All right, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about the Pocket 6K. Ever since the Pocket 6K was announced and released about last week or a week and a half ago, pretty much a lot of people are switching to the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. So this video is pretty much gonna go over majority of the things that you need to know about the Pocket 6K. First thing we're gonna talk about is build quality. Now, the Pocket 6K, similarly to the Pocket 4K, is made of carbon fiber, so it's very lightweight and it might feel a little bit plasticky. And it is a little bit plasticky. That being said, you have to be very careful with this camera. Uh, on the Pocket 4K, I actually accidentally broke off the battery compartment of the Pocket 4K, and I can guarantee you it's gonna be the same exact way in the Pocket 6K because it's very similar on how they're made. Uh, fortunately enough, uh, Blackmagic Design was tracking this problem and they sent me a spare uh, battery door at the bottom of the camera to replace the one I broke off. Definitely would not drop the Pocket 6K. That being said, we're gonna talk about the physical camera. Uh, the camera itself is fairly small. It's very similar to the Pocket 4K, but with a bigger mount. It feels great in my hand. I have tiny hands and it just feels right. The handle feels good. So uh, as far as the size goes, this camera kicks a lot of butt because they were able to pack a lot of features in such a small camera. The next thing we're gonna talk about are the buttons on the camera. If you look on top of the camera, you're gonna see the off and on button. This is right here is your recording button. This is your stills button to take pictures. This is your ISO button. Got your shutter speed or shutter angle. Now this button right here is a WB that stands for white balance. Now as you can see right here, there are three customizable function buttons. There's one here, two, and then three. I have these set for exposure controls and LUT, and I'm gonna show you that here in a second. So what I'm gonna do now is show you how to change the function buttons on top of the camera. Let's go ahead and go to the menu system. We're gonna go to setup. Let's go ahead and switch over the pages. And right here is where you can change what each function button does. So as you can see, F1, I have it set as false color. F2 is focus assist and F3 is display light. Now up here is the little scroll wheel that lets you choose your options in the menu systems. Additionally, there is another record button right here in front, supposedly for selfie mode, which doesn't make sense because you can't really see yourself, but it's there if you ever need it. So let's go ahead and turn on the camera and flip it over so we can go ahead and look at the other menus. Top right button right here is your auto exposure button. So let's go ahead and change the iris to 5.2 or something like that. Exit out of that. We're gonna go ahead and press the auto exposure button. Press it. And you're gonna see that it's gonna change the aperture to 1.7, which is the maximum aperture of this lens. All right, so right below that is the auto focus button. Let's go ahead and press that, see if you can find the camera. And there you go, it auto focused on the red Scarlet Dragon. Additionally, you can actually touch focus on the Pocket 6K just by holding this just by touching the screen like that, it's gonna focus whatever you're touching, which is pretty nice. Not a lot of people know about this, but now I'm showing you. Just touch and hold. Now moving down the line, you're gonna see the high frame rate button. Basically what this is gonna do is switch over to your higher frame rate. So let's go ahead and click this, and you're gonna see right here, it's gonna change it to 48 frames per second, which I have set up in the menu system. This button is customizable, and I'm gonna show you that later on in the menu system. All right, the next button we're gonna go over is the zoom button. If you click on it, you're gonna see that the camera is gonna zoom, so you can actually focus a little bit better. So you can see right there, and I do have focus peaking on, which we will go over here in a second. This button right here is your menu system. So if you click on it, it's gonna open up the menus. Now the next button we're gonna talk about is this play button. It's pretty simple, we just press play and it's gonna give you all the videos that you've recorded. Press play and you're gonna see that it's gonna give you that footage. Press the record button once and it's gonna take you to recording mode. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the menu system. Now the menu system of the Pocket 4K 6K Ursa Mini, the Blackmagic Design menu system is very simple. I love how simple it is. Just go ahead, go page by page, it's not, really that complicated. These three dots right here means that there are three options in the record. If you go to monitor, you're gonna see there's two, audio is two, and so on and so forth. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is the five inch HD screen on the back of the camera. Now, a lot of people have problems with this because you can't tilt it, you can't do a 360 software mode with it, but at the same time, guys, this is a cinema camera. Does the Arri Alexa have 
um, a monitor on the back. This is a red helium, red Gemini have a monitor on the actual body. It does not, so the five inch screen does suck because you know you can't really look at it at a low angle or a high angle, but at the same time, just be glad that there's an actual screen on the back of this camera. To solve this issue of having this screen not flippable, you can just get an external monitor. I have the Portkeys BM5, which is 2000 nits. It's an amazing monitor. It's working great so far, or you can get an EVF. I mean, honestly guys, the monitors nowadays are so cheap. The whole screen problem is really not a problem for me because I can easily solve it with a monitor. All right, so let's talk about recording options in Codex. Now this, I'm gonna show you a table because depending on the resolution that you shoot and depending on the codec you're using, the crop factor does change a little bit. So go ahead and take a look at this table so you can see the difference between each resolutions. Now the camera will shoot B-RAW, which is Blackmagic Design's flavor of RAW. You can change everything in post, uh, color balance and exposures and ISO. And additionally, the camera does shoot ProRes HQ422, all the freaking amazing flavors of ProRes. Now let's talk about frame rates or slow motion. The Pocket 6K shoots at 6K up to 50 frames per second in RAW. That's, that's unheard of, guys. Uh, additionally to that, the 1080p footage, you can shoot up to 120 frames per second. And on top of that, you can shoot a 2.8K at 120 frames per second as well. Just be careful, like I said earlier, that the crop factor do change whenever you are changing your resolution in this camera. All right guys, so let's talk about dynamic range, which is probably my favorite part about this camera. This camera has 13 stops of dynamic range. I can tell you right now, unless you absolutely try to overexpose something or clip something, you're gonna have a hard time clipping with this camera because there's so much dynamic range. On top of that, we're gonna go ahead and talk about color science. Now this Pocket 6K has the generation four color science from Blackmagic Design. It has that natural look to it. It looks amazing. The LUT that you can use with this camera, the extended film dynamic range, is not really good indoors, but it's very good outdoors, so just keep that in mind. I can tell you right now, the Rec. 709 LUTs that come with this camera is okay, to say the least. I know they have a lot more work to do, and I know they can do it, we just gotta give them more time. All right, let's talk about media. Now, for the media, you can shoot CFast 2.0 cards or SanDisk SD cards and SSD drives. Now out of the three, the cheapest route is obviously an SSD drive. So last year I was able to get a really cheap mini SSD drive, a T5 for like $120 in Black Friday. So that's pretty sweet as far as memory goes compared to higher other cinema cameras out there that use proprietary memories. So as far as media goes, man, you can't really beat this camera. So the next feature about the Pocket 6K that makes it unique is its dual native ISO, meaning you have ISO 400 and ISO 3200. That means that even shooting at ISO 3200, you're gonna have the same noise profile as when you're shooting ISO 400. That makes this camera a really, really nice low light camera. I can tell you right now that this Pocket 6K is probably uh, Blackmagic Design's best low light camera as of today. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is can you mount this uh, camera on a gimbal like a Ronin S? The answer is yes, but you do have to get an offset plate or a cage for you to offset the camera on the Ronin S as shown in the video that I uploaded last week. So go ahead and check that out in the cards above. But basically the camera is too wide. It's just too fat to sit on the Ronin S. It's not heavy at all. It can take it, but it's just too wide. So you have to offset the camera on the Ronin S plate. Rolling shutter, let's talk about rolling shutter. The rolling shutter is actually not that bad. It's it's not global shutter, but it's still there, but it's not as bad as like DSLR cameras. It's pretty good. I don't usually whip really fast anyway, but I know a lot of people wanna know what the rolling shutter looks like, so go ahead and take a look at this example. All right, so the next topic is highlight recovery. The Pocket 6K, like previous Blackmagic Design camera, is pretty darn amazing at highlight recovery, even at four stops. 
I wouldn't push it to five stops over, about four stops is probably where you're gonna be good at. Now in four stops, you probably won't recover any skin tones. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go over four stops over or even three stops over with skin tones. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the mount itself. Now the Pocket 6K has a Canon EF mount and I know a lot of people are pretty much cursing Blackmagic design for this. Why didn't you get a Canon RF? It's much better. All right, so that's fine and all, but if you think about it, there are a lot of Canon EF lenses out there. If you think about Blackmagic Design's target audience, it's not the bigger guys. It's not the people that can buy $45,000 uh, body only every Alexa. It's the smaller guys that has, you know, Canon stills EF lenses lying around like I do because I have a Canon stills camera. So if you think about it that way, it makes sense for them to have an EF mount. But at the same time, there is, right now, there is somebody creating and making a PL mount converter for this Pocket 6K. He's actually trying to raise money right now so he can get this out. It's gonna be a Canon EF to PL mount for the Pocket 6K, so go ahead and check that out. That's gonna be coming soon. So that kind of solves your problem as far as, you know, all those higher ups that have all those PL mounts. You should be able to use your PL lenses on the Pocket 6K very shortly. At the same time, Blackmagic Design has different mount cameras for the Ursa Mini uh, 4.6K and Ursa Mini Pro, so maybe one day they'll come out with a PL mount version of this camera. I mean, I don't see why not. So the next topic we're gonna talk about are the inputs on the actual camera itself. Next thing we're gonna go over are the inputs on the side of the camera. Let's go ahead and flip this over. You're gonna see that there's a 3.5 mil audio microphone jack, headphone jack, flip this over, HDMI, and you're gonna see here, this is the power cable. You have a USB 3.0 right here, and you have your mini XLR right here, which is pretty sweet. So next thing we're gonna talk about is anamorphic shooting with the Pocket 6K. A lot of people were mad at the Pocket 4K because it did not have anamorphic shooting. So Pocket 6K has 6.5 anamorphic ratio. So if you have a two times stretch lens, that's gonna give you a nice 2.39 aspect ratio the squeeze in DaVinci Resolve and it looks fantastic. You can shoot in RAW, Q0, it looks nice, it looks amazing. Not only that, the actual screen on the back lets you de-squeeze it as well so you don't have to look at a skewed image or you don't need an external monitor. You can look at the screen on the back and it's gonna de-squeeze it for you. All right, the next topic we're gonna talk about, we're almost there guys, is the stills mode on the Pocket 6K. Now the Pocket 6K is not a hybrid camera. I don't think it is, but Blackmagic Design did include a stills mode on the camera itself. You can shoot a 21 megapixel still out of this camera, which I've tried. It's actually not that bad. Obviously it's not gonna beat my Canon 60 Mark II, but if you absolutely have to take a picture of something, it's definitely usable. So the next topic we're gonna to talk about is the camera not having IBIS body image stabilization, which a lot of people are getting really used to. So this camera unfortunately does not have it, but if you have a Canon lens that has image stabilization, it does work with this camera. So the next thing we're gonna talk about are the exposure tools available on the Pocket 6K. The one that's pretty obvious, it's right in front of your face, is the histogram right there at the bottom left. But additionally, you can have false color with the Pocket 6K. I think I have it as function one. There it is, that is the false color on the Pocket 6K. So the next thing we're gonna talk about, I get asked all the time, will a Pocket 4K cage work on the Pocket 6K? Right now, I have the Tilta half cage. You can fit it in there. I know a lot of people were telling me, yes, you can, yes, you can, yes, you can. You can fit that Tilta half cage on the Pocket 6K, but you're gonna scratch your camera. I almost did. It's really tight. However, Tilta today just came out with a fix for this problem. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna start selling the half cage or Tilta cage they have with a removable logo, because that's the only thing that's blocking the Pocket 6K from using the Tilta half cage and full cage, is the Tilta logo that they have on top of that camera cage. So what they're doing now, I ordered one, and I'm gonna make a video later on, is they're selling that, and then they're gonna start including that logo so you can interchange your cage, Tilta cage, with the Pocket 4K and the Pocket 6K, so that's problem solved. So as far as Tilta cage goes, it should work, it will work once I get that replacement logo that they're gonna send me here shortly. 
All right, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the wireless control on the camera. This camera will let you control it with no video feed, obviously, via a Bluetooth and an app, which I am using right now. If I'm gonna go to the app right now on my phone, I can connect from my phone to the camera and I can change exposures, I can focus, I can record using this phone app. I'm gonna try and see if I can screw up the focus real quick. I'm gonna touch AF. Okay, I don't know, let's see if I can move it up a little bit and then touch AF. Okay, so that, that, that screwed it up and hopefully you'll see the, the camera changing focus. But that is such an amazing feature for me because in situations like these, 98% of the time I'm by myself when I'm recording, so being able to focus myself, being able to record start and stop myself using the phone app is pre it's pretty amazing. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the audio quality on the Pocket 6K. The Pocket 6K has built-in microphones. It has a 3.5 mil input jack and a mini XLR, so it's freaking loaded as far as audio goes. The sky's the limit as far as audio goes with this tiny little camera. So I mainly use the mini XLR and I also use the 3.5 mil whenever I'm using my lav mic, uh, the Sennheiser G3 like I'm using right now. But the audio options with this camera is truly amazing. Speaking of audio, this mini XLR is pretty amazing because what I ended up getting is a mini XLR to a regular XLR. I'm gonna show you that right now. So this right here is what I got for the Pocket 4K and 6K. It's a mini XLR to XLR, so that means you can use XLR microphones with this camera, which is freaking amazing. All you do is plug this in, plug the other end, to your XLR boom microphone or lavalier microphone, whatever you have, whatever microphone you have that's XLR, and you're pretty much good to go. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is battery life. Unfortunately, the Pocket 6K uses Canon LPE6 batteries, which you can get around 48 minutes when recording 6K and a CFast 2.0 cards. As far as I know, if you use an SSD drive, it's gonna be even less. So that's another problem with the Pocket 6K and it was a problem with the Pocket 4K. However, Blackmagic Design actually came out with a battery grip that lets you install two batteries instead of one on the Pocket 4K and 6K, so that's one option. Another option is you can use a V-mount battery with the Pocket 6K by just getting a cable so you can even run a longer battery time when using the Pocket 6K like I'm using right now. I have a V-mount battery connected to the camera via a D-tap to a Pocket 6K cable. All right, so what we're gonna do next is just go ahead and go through the menu system real quick. The record menu is here where you can change your codec from Blackmagic Raw to ProRes, change your quality or bit rate as far as compression goes, and your resolutions are all right here. The next page is gonna be your dynamic range. If you wanna record or see everything in video, you can do that by just pressing this, or if you want an extended video, you can do that. But if you want a flat film look, you can go ahead and click that. The project frame rate is just your frame rate of the project, that's not necessarily what you're shooting in. The off-speed recording, that is your high speed or slow motion frames per second. So you can see here I have it set at 48 frames per second. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Preferred card for recording, you can do CFast, SD, or fullest card, and you can do stop if recording drops frame, which is really useful so you're not wasting your card and time. Go ahead, press next. You can do your time lapse here. You can capture every two seconds, which, which I do, because that's what I like. You can turn on sharpening, but I have that off. You can also apply the LUT in the video, which I really don't use because I bought a raw camera to shoot raw. The next screen is gonna be your monitor screen. So the top is saying which setting are you trying to change. If you do both, then every setting that you change here is gonna affect the LCD, the back screen, and the HDMI as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Frame guides, uh, uh, the guide opacity, focus speed, colored lines, the focus assist level, I suggest you put this on high or medium because the low is pretty much pointless. And you can change the color to red or green, zebra levels, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and go here. You can turn on your thirds, crosshair, center dot, crosshair, leave that on, safeguard area, and then you can do your anamorphic de-squeeze right here. All right, so moving on, let's go to audio. You're gonna be able to change your audio here in audio levels. Let's go to setup. I already showed you guys this earlier. Nothing much to change here. 
tally light, the, the LED brightness, changing that, reset. You can remap the pixels right here in this uh, page right here. You can see the software version, playback all clips, single clip. Next, you can connect to Bluetooth and use the phone to control the camera. So you can turn that on if you wanna do that. Let's go ahead and go to presets. I don't have any presets. And lastly, the LUT page, which has extended video, hybrid log gamma, PQ curve, which is HDR10 and Pocket 6, 6K film the video LUTs. I have extended video because that's what I like with the Pocket 6K and 4K. All right guys, I think I pretty much talked about everything about this camera, the Pocket 6K. I don't know if I forgot something, but I'm hoping I got everything that I needed to talk about. So what I'm gonna do now is just give you my verdict. As you all know, I buy and rent cameras out of my own pocket nobody pays me to say what I say so this is my honest opinion about this camera I look at it as a cinema camera not a hybrid camera not a stills camera it's a cinema camera now if you look at other cinema cameras out there like a red helium red Gemini red dragon red scarlet W area Alexa era 65 I put this camera in that category because of the image Blackmagic Design's goal is to give you the best image out of a camera for pretty much the cheapest price. Pocket 6K is $2,500 body only, but it comes with a mount and a screen. You look at a red Helium or a red Gemini, we're talking about $20,000 and up for just a body only. No screen, no mount, no cards, no slots, no nothing. You look at an Aerie Alexa, which is 1080p, 3K, upscale to 4K. That's $45,000, no screen, no IBIS. So if you look at it this way, maybe it'll help you understand this camera a little bit more because for $2,500, Blackmagic Design had to cut corners, whether it was for the build quality the non-flippable screen, they had to cut costs somewhere because if they started adding those things, then you're obviously gonna have to start adding more money to the camera. So at $2,500, it's even less if you sell DaVinci Resolve if you already have it. Answer this question for me. What shoots 6K raw at 50 frames per second? That's under 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, so on and so forth. You really can't expect too much out of this camera. No IBIS, battery life, no flippable screen. Guys, it's $2,500. So I hope that you guys learned something new today. Probably not because there's a lot more Blackmagic user nowadays, which is really good um, because Blackmagic design honestly deserves all the props because they are changing this industry for the better.